What it is, what it do, you tune into the Jose Morales podcast. I am back on another solo episode. I hope you guys are enjoying your Monday morning so far, and I hope you enjoyed last week's episode, The Self-Made Contract. This week, I am going to be talking about you making up your mind of doing something. You can say you're going to do something and do it, but if your mind is not committed to doing that thing that you're going to do, and you have not committed to it mentally, it will never get done. So this can also relate to the previous episodes, and this falls right on that, and this is why I wanted to do it this week. So before we get started with that, I'm going to give you a little update of things and how things are going down here. And I am happy to share with you guys that I am going to be a guest speaker at my first event. And those that have listened to my podcast for a while You probably already know that that was one of my personal goals that I wanted to be a guest speaker at an event. And today I will be talking at the Embassy Suites in downtown Sacramento to about 600 people, I believe. Um, They're going to be principals and athletic directors from schools from Atwater all the way to Auburn, Yuba City, all through Sacramento, Stockton, Lodi, Modesto, all the surrounding cities, um, and I am going to be talking to them. My uh, vision for that event is I want to make these people feel inspired, but also feel appreciated for what they do. So I'm excited to be that person to talk to them because not only am I from this area, but I visited the Central Valley a lot growing up. So it's, it's, it, it holds a very special spot in my heart. And to be able to be where I'm at now and be able to ex, uh, share my story with them and explain to them that I'm almost, I'm like a product of their work because sports saved me and I'm from their community. And I'm excited to be the one, to be the guest speaker for the first ever annual, um, it's called The Huddle, the, the first ever uh, principals and athletic administrator summit. So I'm pumped up. With, I'm pumped up for that. Also, we had the day at the park. Those that are a part of the gym that came by to the park, we played a uh, dodgeball, basketball, football, soccer. We ate a whole lot of tacos. It was a great turnout. It was actually the first time it rained, and we had a lot of people show up. We've never before had a line for tacos, but for some reason this time, there was a line for the tacos. I'm not sure if everyone showed up at the same time or what happened, but it was a great time. Thank you for everyone who came out. Um, It just means so much to me. And then the surprise cake, um, the singing the happy birthday. I'm just happy and grateful to not only have you guys a part of the gym, but to be able to call you guys my friends. So again, thank you all that came. And thank you all that are a part of this. And last thing, as far as update, I'm going to talk about the webinar that I was supposed to launch on 9-16. Yes, I picked the date on purpose. I wanted to launch it on September 16th. And the day that I was going to launch, right before launching, we did a uh, last check of everything, make sure everything was running smoothly. Everything was running smoothly and we found a big error that we had to uh, fix. And the people I'm working with is a agency of people that are professionals at creating webinars. And these people um, are from all over. There's people from Europe, a guy in the East Coast, in India, in Africa, and they're all different people as far as what their professional, what their profession is. So they all are professionals in marketing and sales and in IT work and sometimes they're not the best at communicating with each other and that's what happened here and the ball was dropped big time and we were missing a big part so Scotty and I had to fix that at last minute um, I hit up Scotty Scotty's always willing to just come up and save the day I hit him up I believe it was on a Friday and he was willing to we met in Granite Bay uh, when we got there, we found out another uh, another downfall that it was a video. We were planning on just doing it, just voice. I didn't expect video to be a part of it. So then we had to reschedule. Long story short, I was unable to 
uh, release and launch this webinar the date I wanted. I was backed up, a, uh, backed up another week, but it's finally done, finally launched, and I couldn't be happier to make an impact in our community in boxing. And this is the beginning of something much bigger. So I wanted to give a shout out to Scotty for helping me with this. And if you guys ever need anything with video, if you guys are not familiar with Scott, Shots with Scott on Instagram, this guy is amazing, not only as a person, not only with his work, but with his himself, his core values and who he is as a person. He is, um, he has such a good heart and soul, and plus he has a beautiful family. He just had his baby. If you're gonna support a small business, this is a small business that is amazing to support. So I wanted to make sure I gave him a shout out. And I wanted to kind of dive into this a little bit because this is a common mistake that happens in, in with this webinar is a prime example. Uh, you get people that come up with these great ideas to make money and these great ideas do make great money, but the people that are running it day in and day out lack passion. And if you lack passion and love, the things do not come out the same way. And it's funny, right before recording this podcast, I was actually talking to Scotty about that, talking about the difference something makes when you have the love and passion for something versus when you're doing it because it makes money. And prime example, webinar, everything's great, but the lack of communication, the lack of, of, of passion for the success of, its, of their clients shows. You can tell they care about the money, you can tell they wanna get it done, but they're missing the passion and the love. And this reminds me of boxing because common mistake is people focus so much on the technique from the very beginning, doing everything right, the crazy details, where to do this, where to do that, when to do that, and blah, 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 blah. But they're forgetting of one important thing, the heart and love passion behind this. And it doesn't matter if the person has great technique. You can have great technique, but if you have great technique and you don't have the passion for it, it's not gonna be the same. And like I said, everything's parallel in sports, in life, and in boxing. And this is the prime example. I think of it as, imagine you have a race car. And this race car, this car that you have, you're doing all the modifications to the car. You're changing you're changing everything about it, the tires, the wheels, you're modifying the engine, you're doing everything to make this car fast, but you're never paying attention to the driver. If you have the wrong person driving this car, it doesn't matter how fast the car is, it's not gonna perform well. Why? Because he is the one driving the car. In sports, in boxing, in business, the people, the leaders, the head of this are the driver. The boxer, the heart and soul, the passion behind it, they are the driver of that body, that body that you're showing all the good technique to. So if there's no right driver in the head of the business, in the head of the boxer, they will not succeed. And this is exactly why I have the, uh, the boxer motto in the gym. And those that are familiar with the warrior program and the boxing motto is no one can make you successful the will to success comes from within. And I have every boxer that before they get into the ring with me, they have to know this. And the reason why they have to know this is I always remind them that I can't have you, I can't make you successful, I can't make you good, I can't make you train hard, I can't make you run every day. If you don't want this because you love this and because you have a passion for this, and that is why I have that there. I have that there to constantly remind them and then check them on it. Have you been doing this? And again, you're not cheating me, you're cheating yourself. And this is everything we need to know as boxers, we need to have this in our head as business owners, as parents at home, because if we don't love our family, we don't care for this. And this is not something we generally do because we care, we're doing it because we're just parents and we're just fathers. There's a difference. And then also as a person, just in general, as a teenager, as, as a friend to your, to your friend, or just as a human being, everything you do 
should be done with passion and purpose and and the will because and because you have the will to do it because it's genuine, not because you're being forced to do it. And this is exactly what this episode is about. This episode is about making sure your mindset is there when you commit to something. And I'm going to share with something very personal with you guys that I don't think I've ever shared with anybody, ever. Um, if you're close to me, you probably know this, and probably the only person that knows this is probably my wife because she lives with me. But my entire life, I've had a eating disorder. I call it disorder an addiction, or let's call it an addiction, not a disorder. Because my entire life, I've been, I've in a way been addicted to eating shitty. I've been addicted to eat bad food. I've been, um, I've been addicted to, I have bad even eating habits. And the reason where this came from is with me as a young kid, my mother, when she was gone working and all that, I didn't see her. So her way to show me love and tell me she loves me is, is by when she was coming in between jobs and she was coming to the house to shower, change and go to work to the next job, her way of, showing that she loves me is calling me, hey, uh, what do you like to eat? I want McDonald's, I want Jack in the Box, I want this. And she'll drop off whatever I wanted and go to work. Because her, that was the only way, that was the only way for me to feel love from her. Like that was her way of being like, look, I love you, I brought you this, because then she was gone again. A years of doing that over and over, it was so hard for me when I was competing, having to eat right, so my eating right became not eating at all or eating very less or like not as enough or just pretty much starving myself because it was so hard for me to eat things that I should be eating the right way. Like you can eat a lot, just eat good stuff, not eating cheeseburgers, you know what I'm saying? And it was hard for me to understand this as a teenager. And my, my addiction for sugary drinks and soda and all this became a bigger problem. And it was never a big issue as far as how I felt. As a teenager, it really didn't affect me. I don't think it did. But then as I got older, I noticed it did affect me. And then as I got older, I started feeling my body differently. I started feeling, I started seeing things. And then when I went to Miami, I remember I shared the story with you guys of my knee uh, flaring up and not being able to walk. That was like a big, big, big wake up call for me because it made me, it made me uh, in, uh, see myself in the future without changing my eating habits. It made me look at myself 20 years from now. Am I going to be diabetic? And then my family, another reason why this even crossed my, my, my head is because all my uncles on both sides, diabetic, on dialysis and doing this stuff. So it's in my DNA. I'm, I, I can easily end up like them. And it crossed my mind. And when it crossed my mind, I... And when I was in Miami and I couldn't walk and I couldn't even swim, I couldn't do all this because my knee was messed up. It, it gave me a lot of time to think and see if this is really something, how I want to end up. Like, do I really want to end up like this? Does Jose really want to end up uh, not being able to walk every day or on a wheelchair or losing a leg because of diabetes? And this shit just woke me up. But what really inspired me is is I posted on Instagram, hey, you guys think I can never drink Dutch or never drink anything but water for the rest of my life or something like that I posted. And a lot of people put no. And then right after I did that, I asked my wife, I said, hey, do you think that I can never again drink any sugary drink? I just drink water. She looked at me and said no and laughed. Like she said it in a very like, you're crazy. And when she said this to me like that, it was very um, motivational because those that know my wife and know how she is towards me, if you know, she is the last person to tell me sweet things. She will never, ever give me any compliment. She will never say anything nice to me. She's, she's super like, she... I think she's just trying to keep me humble. I don't know what it is, but she never gives me a compliment. She, ne she will never tell me she loves me first. She will never do anything sweet like that. So for me, I took this as like, you know what? I'm going to show you I can do this shit. 
I'm going to show you that I can do that. And by her doing that, it motivated me that much more. So I made up my mind. I eliminated soda first. And the biggest thing with this is, um, and, the, and the reason why I'm sharing this with you is, I've tried to do this for years. So this is not something that I just did right now. Uh, many times, I, I don't, I, this is not even in my hand, where I try to change just soda, not even eating, just strictly soda. I was fucking addicted to soda. It was in my head that every time I ate, like if I ate lunch or I ate dinner, I had to have a soda. Like I couldn't have water, I couldn't have lemonade, it had to be a Coke. Weird as shit. I don't know where the hell I got that from, but in my head, I needed a drink of soda. And for years, I was, I was like that. And then I got to a point where I was like, I'll just drink, I'll I, I, I try not to drink soda, and then I would fail, I would do it for a week, or I'll do it literally maybe two weeks. I've never went longer than a week. I don't even think I've done two weeks without drinking soda. So that was my first biggest challenge, and I told myself, I'm gonna eliminate that first. But I was thinking, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this without relapsing? Like, I didn't want to relapse. I wanted to do this. And I fucking sound like I'm a drug addict right now. But I'm serious. That's how I took it. I'm, I want to do this for a long term. Like, I don't want to be soda free, sugar free, and eat good for two months and then and going right back to where I was. I want to completely change my life. My, I, I want to completely change my eating habits. So I started with soda. I said, I'm not gonna drink soda, and I've been soda free now since May. It's been about four months now. It's almost five months in October. And to be real, I don't think I ever would have done that. In the way I, st I created that first by eliminated, eliminating soda and sticking with sugary drinks. For some reason, that really helped me. I said, I'm only gonna drink sugary drinks. I'm gonna drink juice and all the bad drinks, Arizona, sweet teas and shit like that. And not, and I'm not saying that was healthier, that was better, but it was helping me not do the, the, the drinking of the soda. When I moved to that, I did that for a few months. And then I said, all right, it's time to eliminate this. And that's when I posted on Instagram and that's when I told my wife and that's when I made up my mind. And the biggest part of all this is I made up my mind. That's the biggest, biggest, biggest thing. The lesson of all this is the difference between Jose all the other times and Jose this time is Jose made up his mind. The other times Jose was like, I'm gonna try this. You know what, I think I can do this. Oh, I want to do this. No, 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 I am going to do this. I told myself I'm going to do this. I'm not giving myself no other option. I said, I'm gonna do this. I made up my mind. I gave myself that self-made contract and I told myself, I'm gonna do this. And when I did that, no joke, the first week was the toughest week. The reason why it was the toughest is because again, I can't drink, I mean, I can't eat dinner or lunch without drinking my soda, my sugary drinks. So I found this fucking great hack. You put lemon, you just cut a piece of lemon and throw it in the water. For some reason, it makes it taste like it's not water. It gives it another little taste. And it's, I'm pretty sure you guys had or heard people put water with lemon or whatever. But so for some reason, that helped my, my mind a lot. Second week was okay all the way until we competed in Idaho. And um, for some reason, I craved the shit out of Dutch Bros. I was fucking in desperate need of a Dutch Bros. Every time I drove, and then my hotel happened to be next to a Dutch Bros. After competition, everyone's eating and everyone's getting their drinks, soda, this and that. And I have a group of like 30 people and they're drinking soda and they're drinking this. I'm like, my God, I need a, I need a Dutch Bros. And I was so close to getting the Dutch Bros, so close. I even told my wife, look it up. And if it's on the way there, we're getting it. So she looked it up and it was on the fucking way there. My ass, we're driving to Dutch Bros and as I'm driving to Dutch Bros, Alex calls me and Alex calls me because he's asking if I want something from the store, something like that. He asked me if I wanted something from the store. And I'm like, no man, I'm actually about to get Dutch Bros. <laughs> he's like, hey, stay strong, don't do it, don't do it. And Alex actually talked me out of getting Dutch Bros. So shout out to Alex. And when I, when I, um, 
after hanging up with Alex, I'm like, you know what? Fuck this. I'm not going to do it. So I didn't get it. I felt amazing not doing it, but I also found out why it was so hard. In Idaho, for some reason, their water was fucking disgusting. I was getting the wrong water or what it was. It was very hard for me to drink that water. And that what made me, that's what made me even want something else to drink even more. Um, I made it through the third week, though. The third week has actually was actually the best week. Um, third week was was I had zero cravings. We had we had I we had the day at the park. I had poker at my house on Friday, so I had poker at my house on Friday. Uh, they were drinking. I had a, a, the Canelo fight Saturday at my house, and I had my family come over. Everybody was drinking stuff, different things, and then Sunday at the park. So I had three events with multiple people and never not once did I crave anything besides water. Right there and then I kind of like, wow, this is the first time I'm not craving something bad. And, and I've also noticed that my, my, I don't crave eating bad. Like it's hard for me to eat something that's, that's not healthy, weird as shit. I never thought I'd do that. Now I'm kind of like my, I feel like my taste bugs are changing. I'm not saying I wouldn't eat a fucking cheeseburger if you give me one, I probably will eat it, but I'm saying it's weird because I'm not craving it as much. Like before I would crave bad stuff, like I would crave it. Now I don't crave it as much. Um, so I, it's just weird how that happened, but again, it started with my mindset. And the crazy thing about drinking water the whole time, it's very, and FYI, I'm eating, so don't feel like I'm strictly drinking water and I'm not eating. I had a couple of people think that I was doing that. I'm eating, I'm, and I'm eating really bad. I'm eating, not really bad. Actually, the beginning it was really bad. It's actually got a lot better. But I'm drinking a lot of water. I drink about three of these a day now versus before it was one of these a day. Now I'm drinking three of these. Um, and um, on top of that, it's giving me a whole lot more energy. It's making me feel like weird. Uh, you would think I'll have less energy, but it makes me feel like more energetic. I don't understand where that came from, but I think it's because I don't have a sugar crash as before, like I have a crash. That's what I, that's my guess. I don't know. Um, I feel amazing as far as how I feel physically. Now I just need to feel, I know I could feel better by exercising more and eating better. Those are my next two things. And the reason behind, and, and you guys are maybe wondering like, what the fuck's wrong with Jose? Why does Jose want to do this shit? I look at, I look at life like sports. So if I want to better myself in, in, and me personally, I have these big dreams for me, like I mentioned a few episodes ago, episodes ago. And if I want to make all these big changes and I want to do all these different things, I need to be good. I need to be able to perform at a high level. And just like athletes do, like LeBron James and all this, they make all these things so they can perform on the basketball court better. I have to be able to perform on the daily basis. If I'm too busy, uh, sleeping because my sugar crash or I feel like shit or I feel here and I'm not really the person I am or I, and my mind is all depressed or I'm all sad or I'm all this and that because all these side effects that food and, and all these other things are bringing onto my body, that's affecting my performance. And if my performance is being affected, that means the stuff that I'm going to be getting done is going to get affected. The time with my sons are gonna get affected. The, the time with my wife is gonna get affected. My business is gonna get affected. If all these things are being affected, guess what? I need to change the way I eat. I need to change the way I work out. And I need to change what I'm drink, how I drink my water and how much water I'm drinking every day. Because now is messing up my long-term goals. And that's how I'm looking at all this. I'm doing good, I'm do I have accomplished a, a, a great amount of stuff, but that don't mean shit to me because I know I could do a whole lot more. And for me to be able to accomplish all that more stuff that I want to do, I need to better myself from within a whole lot more. Another thing too that I feel like big food chains and big pharma and all this, for some reason, you could call me conspiracy theorist if you want or whatever you want to say, but in a way, I kind of feel like we're like, they're working with each other to make sure we, that's a returning customer. I mean, that's basic fucking street knowledge right there. Uh, you give somebody something and they get hooked on it and they constantly come back to you because they're addicted to you, they're addicted to what you're, the service you're providing or the drug or the food or whatever it is that you are. 
if you get us unhealthy enough and then we go to the doctor and they give us medicine enough, you got a returning customer all day, every day. So in a way, I kind of see like these are all things that are get put in our way as distractions. Uh, food, shitty food, the lack of nutrition um, knowledge, uh, the drinks, the alcohol, the, the drugs, all this stuff is all in our way as distractions to making our, a healthy us. A healthy us, a healthy you, a healthy person is a healthy community. And a healthy community, that's, that's, that's very threatening to the government. That's threatening to just in general for people to be together is not good. And that comes from being healthy. And that's why in my head, I kind of feel like all these things are getting thrown at us as distractions. Again, that could be the conspiracy theorist in me, but that's how I see things. And you tell me what you guys think. Now, quick recap of this episode. No one can make you do anything. The will, to, the will to do it comes from within. Exactly that. And sometimes your will to do whatever it is for you to make up your mind may not come until you hit rock bottom. It may not come until you do that. It's okay. And you may get influenced into doing things because so-and-so happened and all that, but you're not really going to do it to your full potential. That's also okay. But I want to plant the seed in your head that you can do anything you want to do. The first thing that has to happen, though, is you have to convince yourself and you have to make your mind up that you're going to do it. So by saying that, I'm going to end this with, I hope you have a great week. Hope you like this episode. If you know anyone that will gain from this episode, like, share, and if you have not left a review, leave a review. Thank you guys so much again for listening, for watching, and for tuning in. I will be back on next Monday with a guest. And if you have any ideas or any guests you would like to have on, let me know who they are. I will put them on if you request them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm out. Deuces.